Hi there, Z here, and welcome to another Gaming on a Budget review. Or as I probably should rename it, Zach buys a game for cheap because the game's literally been out for years, and now he's going to explain why he likes it. Review. Doesn't really run off the tongue that well, so we're just going to stick with gaming on a budget. And boy, if you guys haven't heard of this game that I'm going to be reviewing today, you probably stay away from the drama section of YouTube, which I honestly cannot do. It's a part of my life, and I would suggest everybody to get off my fucking back about it. But anyways, the only way I ever found out about this game was, I think about a year or a year and a half ago, it was brewed in some controversy, because when it first came out, a gaming editor from a very prominent name in gaming kind of stole a review from a lowly 50k YouTube channel and just kind of changed a little bit of words. Took some words and just changed that with another one. Very, very similar to what college kids do when they're on a fucking crunch because they spent the entire weekend on porn and alcohol. So he just did it. And boy, everyone hated him for it. And boy, did I have a good time figuring that out. But through the controversy, through the drama that this pretty much was born in, is this a good game? Well, let's find out. Dead Cells is a Metrovania roguelike game developed by Motion Twin Studios and is about a sentient green snot parasite inhabiting a recently beheaded prisoner's corpse, bringing it to life only to force it to die over and over and over again. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers. Alright, 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 alright. I might need to put a little bit more filler in here. There's no way I'm going to get to 10 minutes doing that. So, Dead Cells is a game that, ah, at the risk of sounding like a hack reviewer, it's like Dark Souls. Hey, I hate that reference just as much as the rest of you, okay? But it's not really the reason that everyone else goes with, right? Everyone says that a difficulty of a game is like Dark Souls, and although this game is definitely challenging at some points, especially if the game cock teases you by throwing you only shitty weapons and secretly laughing behind your back, the real reason I'm saying this game looks like Alucard had a gay baby with Schmo is the telegraphed attacks. Just like Dark Souls and all of its brothers, sisters, and retarded cousins, throughout this game you'll notice several different ways the enemies can attack you. They can throw bombs at you, lunge at you, suck you into a giant tornado, spit little balls of fucking maggots in your face, or simply come out of nowhere because invisibility is a bitch in this game. Anyway, playing through this game can either be really easy for those of you with good reflexes, not whittled down by life and copious amounts of alcohol, or you can be me. But in many instances, no matter how good or bad you are at video games or how well you can predict enemy attacks, you will most likely die. Multiple, multiple times. It's just a simple fact here, people. It's because like any other roguelike game out there, this one starts you off with the crappiest of swords, the shittiest of bow and arrows, and a shield that makes it feel like it's made out of dung, okay? Because even if you put it up, even if you see some something coming from a distance and you put it up, it doesn't absorb all the damage. Yeah, and of course. Why would a shield absorb all the damage? Fucking hell, but throughout the game, you unlock more items, better items, talents, and skills to help you get further into the next run. And I guess there is no better time but now to explain more about the upgrades and what you could do to put them towards your character. While mercilessly slaughtering more enemies than Ted Bundy did on a good day, you'll get this gold and these little balls called cells. You get it? Dead cells is part of the dial. Who fucking cares? And with these cells, you unlock newer and more powerful weapons, active items, or skills that make the next run just a little bit more bearable. I mean, if you survive the level, that is. If you die during the level, then fuck you! All the cells that you just gathered are as useful to you as porn is to a blind man. But what makes this game so highly recommended? I mean, Steam has a solid 10 out of 10 on it, and Metacritic has an 89%, so is it really that good? Does it deserve this much praise? I personally think so, but maybe not a complete 10 out of 10. Just call this a biased review right here, right now, since I'm typically a fan of roguelike games, as many of you probably know. 
Some call the idea of playing the same game over and over and over again, slowly unlocking new items and abilities with only the layout of the map that's different as lazy and awful, but honestly, it keeps poor schlubs like me interested, alright? Not to mention the overwhelming nostalgic feeling of Castlevania that you get with this game. I mean, from the beautiful surroundings that are really gorgeous at times, to the fun little things like desperately fighting an enemy only to accidentally break apart part of the wall to reveal a secret. Anybody remember pork chops? I know I do. It's a really fun, fast-paced game that actually takes a while to master. And even if you tell yourself, okay, the game's gonna try to push me along as fast as it can, but you know what? I'm gonna do this at my own speed. Yeah, I'm gonna go as slow as I need to because I just wanna finish this game so I can feel good about myself. You know what they say, the tortoise finishes the soup or whatever the fuck that is, but you'd think that. You really do think that, and then you get cock-blocked by these doors that you find at the end of every single level. Now, what are these doors? Oh, nothing. They're just a mini bonus round of fun things like free cells and weaponry that's just all free for you to take. But why can't you get in this door? It doesn't make any sense to me. I beat the level. I did a good job at that level, and you probably did, but guess what you didn't do? You didn't play by the game's rules. You didn't finish the level at a lower time, and you didn't get a high enough kill streak to lock unlock these two doors. So guess what? Fuck you. You're a loser. Get on to the next level, loser. So, even when you decide to pace yourself, the game tempts you to rush through absolutely everything, obviously making you more prone to mistakes. Sure, if you aren't tempted by such nice things as better items and free upgrade points, not to mention bragging rights on internet forums, then I'm sure you will just be fine. But for us pro gamers with small dicks that we need to overcompensate for, this game is relentless in its expectations of us. But let me tell you, in a video game, I'd rather much have chains attached to my nipples than a feather duster to my ball bag if you're picking up what I'm putting down. So we have covered the gameplay. It's fast, it's fun, it's challenging enough to keep trying over and over again, and it punishes you because it knows you love the pain. But is there even a plot to this? A sort of story to keep it going, or is this just vague killing just for killing's sake? Kinda. Yeah, just a little bit. Just kind of. There's this corrupt king and this disease that's kind of just kind of spreading around the entire kingdom. It only leaves behind monsters and people who have kind of off themselves so they didn't have to go through any of this. And all throughout this game, you'll see things like statues and notes left by for people to kind of give you a bit more of an insight of what happened before this disease hit and little minor things like that to understand what's going on. Nothing really overly great. It's just kind of neat to have that in the background. All right, now we got that taken care of. What else do we got to talk about? What else do we got? Let, let me pull out my light like, Dark Souls checklist that I have right here. Hold on a second. It's around here. So, okay, right here. Okay, we have Dark Medieval Settings. Yeah, we went over that. Difficulty Spike Check. Yeah, Telegraphed Attacks. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, right, right, bosses. Of course this game has bosses. But how are they? Well, each boss definitely has their own unique brand of bullshit. Something that you just really have to die a time or two to figure out exactly what they're going to do. And obviously, the more you attack them, the more moves they unlock. So that's just that's just beautiful, like always here. And uh, hey, if you really, really, really want to feel bad for yourself, they have a door after this too. And one of them bonus doors, yeah, just don't ever be attacked or hurt, get hurt by them at all. S sounds simple, right? But all jokes aside, it is really fun kind of blowing through each of them, dying over and over again, but kind of understanding a little bit more, just being more methodical with each playthrough here. It's really kind of fun. Oh man, that was a great battle here. I can't wait to see what the next stage has up. Okay, so I guess we just go through this pipe and um... Huh. This... 
Yeah, th this this is some fucking bullshit. Yeah, if I had to pick one thing that I did not like about this game is when you finally hit your stride 15, 16, 30 hours into the game and you are blowing past every single level like Henry the bitch dwelling cocaine addict, the game only really has three bosses on the basic level. The concierge, the timekeeper, and the hand of the king. And then after that, pull up your panties because you're going through again. Now, the more you play this game, the more you will unlock certain abilities that help you traverse and explore different parts of the map that you weren't able to before. And the more you explore, the more you'll find different levels out there, which means different bosses. Bosses like the Conjunctivitius? Con Conjontovius? Condom something roaming sounding? And the Giant. But... That's really a solid 20 to 30 hours later on in the game, or at least it was for me. And it's not like you're playing those ones on top of the other three. You just go a different route and it just switches out the bosses. You still only fight pretty much three of them. So if you're looking for a game with tens upon tens of boss battles and they're all interesting and weird to look at, you're not going to find it in this game. Is it a major negative mark? No, not really. Most of the fun of this game is just getting so good that you can fluently run through and massacre all the enemies without them laying a touch on you. That's really the best way of playing this game. It's to feel like you're being a ninja. You just go over and you slice them in the back and then you throw out a bomb and then you roll away and it's just really fun. That's the main fun. It's not the actual bosses because those are really just throw down a couple traps and guess what? You fucking won. Congratulations. But anyway, there's a lot of other stuff that I haven't talked about because if, in any game that I really like, I want people to buy it. So if you're interested in this game, 25 bucks, and actually uh, they did put out a DLC that was completely free. So cool on those guys. I've been having a great time with this game and I play it whenever I'm looking to just kind of kill time and catch up on my YouTube videos because focusing intently on one thing instead of multitasking with 13 tabs up, three of them being porn, two of them being like my, my crypto transaction tracker and then at the, the rest of them are just a bunch of different random things I want to buy on Amazon. That sounds so much better than just focusing on one thing because focusing on one thing, it feels like I'm being tasting my grapefruits with a cattle prod most of the time. So, you know, definitely play this game if you're looking for some downtime. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and cheers!